welcome, or welcome back to 4th Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Oh. Lipstick on the teeth. Marvellous. <laughs> Proves I'm human. Now, you will have seen the thumbnail. You will have seen the title. You might even have read the description box. So you know, today, I finally broke and bought the Just My Luck palette from Colourpop. But I've also bought one of their cream gel liners. Now, long-term viewers know me and liners in the waterline do not mix. It's like my nose and foundation. They hate each other. But Paulina said that the little gel pots that she bought were so good, she was actually having to remove them from her waterline at the end of the night. And I wanted this particular shape, this electric daisy, because I thought it was so beautiful and would complement this palette so nicely. And I kind of bought it before I really thought about what I was doing. But this was one of my low buy purchases for this month, so that's fine. Admittedly, I, I had a bit of a wee splurge because of Brexit and Nicky Raven and then they extended the Brexit date again so I could have waited and not broken my low buy but this is part of my official low buy purchases for this month. So, if you want to see exactly how well this performed and what colours I used to create this look? My friend, you're in precisely the right place. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I will have shown you these in the intro. I'll probably have thrown the box for this. Well, I might not have done, I might have saved the box for the intro. Who knows? Um, I'm going to take them both out of their box at the moment though. Uh, this particular eyeliner, because I'm determined to find one that will last on my waterline. <clears throat> and I know that, uh, oh god, Paulina has said that the pots of gel liner from Colourpop last really well on her eyes, so I thought I'd try one of the pen versions. And of course, we knew I was going to cave and buy it eventually, didn't we? I held on for so long, so long, and then I caved. <clears throat> now, when this one arrived, bizarrely, instead of like clear plastic, it had some of this sort of. Um, I don't know why. So I'm going to keep hold of it in case this middle shade here goes a bit loose and going everywhere kind of thing because it does look very shimmery. Um, I have swatched these. Um, bear with, I'm going to go and get myself a drink so I can try and stop barking at you back instantly. I'm back. <clears throat> Let's see if uh, Scully with Iron Brew and a uh, silicone straw will help. Right, I have swatched these. I will put swatches up on screen as I zoom you in. Uh, I'll be very up close and personal when the swatches come down. Please don't scream. Right, <clears throat> going left to right, wrist to elbow. We have got Chances are, kiss my hass, 50-50 or so-so, it's difficult to tell actually the way that's printed, whether it's so-so or 50-50, I think it's 50-50. Big Banks, Mary Jane, Olive You, At Natural, Mobamba and Charmed. Hello, I am back. Uh, Mobamba I did have to swatch quite a few times, but as we know, Swatches 
do not indicate how well a shadow will perform when you get it on your eyes. Now, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and uh, in the description box is a link to the film about my antiperspirant primer that I use every day. My eyes are uh, MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, not set. Right. Now, my channel is aimed at all skill levels, from absolute beginners who have never picked up a brush before, to complete experts. So, if you find that I'm going too slowly for you, there's a speed widget. Please use it. Please don't moan I'm going slowly. Remember how slowly you first did makeup when you were learning. Thank you. Um, I still get comments about it. Uh, when I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid, so I don't have a hooded lid. If your static lid covers part or all of your mobile lid, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. You can still follow my tutorial. All you need to do, get a brush, something like this, or a thin pencil brush, and just mark out, with your eye open, where you need your crease to be. So if you could imagine, if you couldn't see my stack, my mobile lid here, I would create a crease kind of here. Sort of, you know, three or four mils above. So effectively you are creating the illusion of having more lid than you have. Obviously this will reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than I do. Um, I've got a, uh, a film which brushes do I recommend. There's a very, very good set on there which cost me less than three quid on AliExpress. And they've got some really nice tiny brushes. Um, I also like the Morphe M321 and the M562. They are both very, very tiny brushes as you can see. So. What I do have is deep set eyes, and a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids because we suffer the same problem. We get transference of shimmer onto our upper lid. Even when using glitter glues, the glitter will flake off right across the crease. Um, and when we cut our lid, we can't just nicely follow the bulge of our eyeball. To show you what I mean, if I cover my mobile lid, and then close my eye. You can see I've got exactly as much lid again that tucks back in. Likewise, if I cover my upper lid and close my eye, again I've got lid space that tucks back in. So I do have similar issues to people with hooded lids. So I do appreciate the issues and hopefully I'll be, you know, following my tips and tricks, you'll still be able to follow tutorials and achieve a similar look. Right, I'm going to start off with a Morphe M321 and because I've, I'm working on a non-set base, rather than windscreen wiper and then blend, I'm going to treat these as I would a pigment. So I'm going to tap the pigment into place and then afterwards just gently soften the edge. Okay, let me demonstrate. So I'm going to start off with, it's going to kiss my hass because I like the name of it and it makes me chuckle. Okay, there's quite a bit of kick up in pan. I don't know if you can see that. That's really not an issue because at least you're getting product onto your brush. Um, I haven't done my base makeup yet so I'm not going to worry about tapping off. If you have, either tap off or... If you're under 35, put loose powder here to catch it. If you're over 35, that means you're going to be baking and your wrinkles will not thank you. Um, <clears throat> I don't dust or blow the loose pigment away that's on top of the pan because when I go back in for another lot, I can just pick that kick up up on the brush so nothing gets wasted. So, because I want this to appear when my eyes are open and because I have, as I said, deep set eyes, I'm going to start off 
just at this outside edge. Always start at the outer edge. Because if you do suddenly find, whoa, I put way too much pigment down. It's much easier to blend it out on the outside of your eye than it is over here. Because your nose gets in the way. And you can see I've got a little bit on my lid there. Just Not that I'm, I'm going to go with the darker colour later anyway. But So I'm just going to initially... Go along what is effectively my crease line. Just patting. Not quite sure what that wiggle was for. This is one of the joys of fibro. You get sudden mini sort of spasms. That's why I can't blend as quickly as a lot of people do. But, you know, there's hundreds of thousands of beauty channels out there that do you your 20 minute tutorial. So I'm going to be a bit different, even if it does mean my channel grows much, much slower than everybody else's. Now when I relax my brow, you can see big chunk, big chunk, a bit less. So because I want this to look even all the way across, I'm just going to bring the middle section up just a little bit. Like so. And at the moment, I, I know it's looking a bit patchy, but I'm not done yet. I'm just tapping pigment into place at the moment. Just to get the shape that I want. Okay, that I'm happy with. Right, now I'm going to pick some pigment up and concentrate on sorting out any patchiness. So we tap gently. I'm holding the brush right at the end, so I put as little pressure on my eye as possible. I'm just going to pat to add pigment where there are patchy areas and yes even though this area is going to be disappearing back in I still pay attention to it right now I'm going to ever so gently tiny little circular movements all the way along putting almost no pressure on at all, just to soften that edge ever so slightly. Nice. Right. I'm going to do the same thing this side. Now because I'm blinding this side, I can close this one, so I can show you the same technique, but on a closed eye. So again, I start at the outer corner, and start patting the pigment on. This is a slightly slower way of doing it than just whack, whack, whack. But I find that if you're working on an unset base, which obviously I am today, um, it does give a better finish. And it also makes the colours pop a bit more as well. And it's also a good practice for when you are using pressed pigments rather than eyeshadows, because pressed pigments by their nature have more pigment molecules rather than sort of packing ingredients like your talc and your mica and your silicones and stuff. Um, so it just helps you get practice in for using pressed pigments. So again, lower the brows, check on the shape. I think I need to come up a little bit more. Now with this side, it got pulled around an awful lot when I was like five, six years old. And uh, it's caused me some very, very deep creasing, as you can see here. And I end up with tiger striping like that. So what I do have to do on this eye is ever so gently pull the eyelid taut to deal with that tiger striping. Do not do this unless you have to or you will give yourself deep wrinkles and I assure you they are only going to get worse as the years go by <coughs> okay I keep sitting back and checking the shapes of the same because obviously your eyes are not the same shape unless you're James Charles and you photoshop one over to here mm -hmm. yeah that was shade mainly because I'm fed up of seeing James's ass all over my bloody Twitter feed don't even follow the man, for goodness sake. 
All I keep seeing is his butt in chaps, and I'm like, yeah, you did this last year, love, it didn't get your boyfriend. What makes you think it's going to work this year? He's constantly going on. I mean, the, the number of times that, you know, Nick Snyder's saying, oh, did you see this tweet from um, James Charles where he's, you know, he's, I don't know whether he'd been drinking or whatever or whether it was just late and he was tired, but wittering on about needing a man and wanting some, some D. Dinner for those of you under the age of 18. Um, and it's just like, that's, that's so not classy. You know, if you want to do that, have a private Twitter account. Not one that you've got all your young teenage girls following you and teenage boys following you. That's just totally, totally unclassy. Right. There is a bit of patching there. I'm not overly worried. Um, I do struggle here and here on both eyes to get colours to stay, but I am going to be going over that with a deeper colour later, so I'm really not worried about that too much at all. Okay, we'll just add a fraction extra on this outside corner. I just there we go. I'm going to use a clean washcloth to clean the brush off with. Uh, rather than my colour switch because I just find that's actually more effective because um, if you've got something that is a pressed pigment or like for example Jeffrey's blood sugar I have to have a separate colour switch for that because I'd be using blood sugar one day and then I'd go in the next day and I'd clean my brush off of whatever colour I was using and it would come out pink because there was still pigment in there from blood sugar so yeah I prefer I still have my colour switch for tapping off into because it keeps things tidy and then also at the end of the month, if you want to do a what colour eyeshadows have I used this month, you can always, if you want to. Um, right, I'm going to go into Chances Are, which is the absolute lightest shade. Now, greens are very difficult to create. Light greens, even more so. So... Even more kick up in this pan, but you do get quite a bit of pigment on the brush. So, shall we see how this one's going to perform? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to slight when I put this on, I'm going to slightly overlap this uh, kiss my hass colour um, so that it starts the blend. So that on and come on. oh okay hello pigment well, that's that's pretty impressive actually that's very bloody impressive actually okay all right color pop I see you I see what you're doing good grief girl you did not come to play, did you? Wow. Oof. Right. Because uh, my brows are very straight, so I've kind of shaped the end of them there, I'm just going to come up a little bit extra in this top corner where I've got this creasing. Because I actually prefer that, sh that sort of shape rather than the fully rounded shape. Because I've got almond shaped eyes, I like to have a more elongated shape on my lids. I am genuinely shocked at that pigment. Now let's see how well they'll blend together. So I'm just going to literally buff over using the side of the brush, not the tip this time. Literally just, actually no, I might use the tip. I'm just going to buff where the two colours meet to, to get a nice sort of seamless blend so you can't really tell where one colour finishes and the next one starts I just want a nice kind of gradual pick up a little bit more of that light one because this is the problem when you're using super light colours when you start blending like this you can blend the pigment away so if you find that's happening just 
you know, pick up more pigment on your brush. Again, I struggle in this top corner, so I'm just going to pat it on up here. Oh, come on, you were behaving very well earlier. Thank you. Much better. I am really liking this, and I've only used two colours. Oh, that's pretty. That is a very pretty blend that makes. Right, so, exactly the same procedure this side. Overlap to start with, and come all the way along. I like to bring mine sort of down here as well. Again, just because of the shape of my eye, um, I'll deal with any overrun here with um, a pad with my cellar water on, and then when I put my foundation on afterwards, you're not going to notice. But I'm just going to gently blend the edge of that first. That's blending so nicely together. Wow. I feel like uh, Kevin Wilson. Wow. Doesn't he sound, is it me or does he sound like a cat when he does that? Wow. Like meow. Maybe that's why I like him because I like cats. There is some, I think there's also something about the fact he's got a busted nose as well, or has busted his nose in the past. So he's not got these sort of perfect looks that you see so often in Hollywood. He looks more, dare I say it, normal, like an ordinary person would be, rather than someone who's been primped and preened and made to look as absolutely perfect as possible and give you a very unrealistic expectation of what... Sorry about that. My memory card filled up. <laughs> Marvellous. Um, <clears throat> I think I said Kevin Wilson as well, not Owen Wilson. That's that's a very different person indeed. Right, just just going to clean this brush off, and I'm going to grab a slightly different shaped one. I'm going to go in with my um, <clears throat> Royal Anglical Chic Pro eyeshadow brush, which is fluffy but kind of flatter. So it's wider that way than it is that way. Um, and I'm going to pick up I want to go into that Charmed which in here looks almost brown but when you swatch it, it it's a beautiful olive green. This I think is going to be an awesome companion palette to uh, my Smoke Sessions palette that I've got. So, looking forward to playing with those two together. Again, a bit of kick up in the pan, but again, means you're getting pigment on the brush. So I'm going to start off just fluffing this gently on the outer corner here. Wow, okay, hello pigment. I'm just going to, because bearing in mind this is still on an unset base, so I'm kind of patting it on and then doing a little bit of quick circular movements just to see how well it's going to blend and whether I need to sort of, you know, so I can judge how much pigment I need to put on before I start blending. Okay. Now, <clears throat> because effectively by putting this green down I've set my upper lid I've added some pigment to this and I'm just going to windscreen wipe her backwards and forwards through the crease because it's going on top of the green that we put down. And then what I'm going to do, without adding any more pigment to the brush, I'm just going to do little circular movements all the way along the brush, that line just to soften the edges a bit. <clears throat> now. This is super, super important if you have created your own crease because anything light comes forward, anything dark recedes. 
So by doing this, if you've had to create yourself kind of like a faux crease further up, it'll give the illusion of that part of the eye falling back. So it'll help with the illusion of having a visible mobile lid. And as you can see, that has blended so beautifully. I, I, I'm, I genuinely wasn't expecting it to blend that well. As you could probably tell from my oh <laughs> reaction. <laughs> right, same thing this side. This is why I wasn't worried about that um, kind of patching just there. Um, that is my lid rather than the palette. Um, I often struggle there with pigments. So, but you know me, I'm always 100% honest. If it's the palette giving me an issue, I will tell you. <clears throat> so, same thing this side corner, bit of a buff, pick up some more. I do always get more fallout this side because this eyelid moves more. Especially when I'm getting around to deep creases. I might actually have to pick up a little bit of pigment here just to make sure that it covers all of the creased area. There we go. And then I'm going to buff along. This is actually removing some of that green from my lid just there but I mean it hasn't done it this side so it is absolutely my eyelid causing a problem. So if you have a similar thing I will show you in just a moment how I fix that. So once I've blended, charmed, going to clean this brush off and I am going to grab one of the brushes from the um, <clears throat> the AliExpress set that I mention in one of my in my which brush sets do I recommend I'm on the struggle bus today, folks. <clears throat> there we go. This is the what they call a contour brush. And I'm just going to go back in to kiss my hass. And I'm going to very gently kind of pat and blend just to refill that area. See? Fixed. The reason I do it with a more fluffy brush is because if I use the, the, M, the Morphe M321 it'll go on quite densely again and then I'm going to have to re-blend this bit which means I'm going to be vicious cycle at that point. <clears throat> right. Time to put something on the lead. I have no idea why I decided that was an appropriate accent at that point in time. I do apologise. Um, from that same eBay uh, AliExpress set of brushes, I'm going in with what they call a medium shader brush number two. It's basically a concealer brush, flat packer brush, whatever you call it. I've nearly finished this. I've been using this for ages. Um, I use this to wet. Um, shimmers before I put them on because it helps to minimise fallout and does tend to give them a brighter look when you're applying them with a brush rather than with your finger and there's, there's no, it's just not going to happen um, <clears throat> I'm just going to tidy up a little bit here because it's a, annoying me now, never put a wet brush into a pressed dry pigment so always put the pigment on the brush Spray the brush. If you need to go back in, dry the brush off first. 
because otherwise you will get hard pan and although people go oh I'd just rather get hard pan and then just use the sticky tape method that's fine but eventually you will find it will contaminate the whole pan and the sticky tape method won't work anymore so word of warning to the wise so I'm going to go into Mary Jane because that that has been calling my name all morning so I'm packing some pigment on like a seal and I'm going to spread a brush now I always wipe the ferrule dry so that I don't get liquid going down and loosening the bristles here now with this eye I can just use the brushes and the pressure that on the brush to sort of stretch the lid out this side I do have to stretch it out myself because of the creasing but let's just see how this goes on okay all right okay Not as bright as I was expecting. But still super pretty. I don't know why I was expecting it to look more foiled. Um, it's not a bad shadow though. It's actually a really pretty shadow. So I'm going to do the same thing. I've dried the brush off. Added more pigment in the brush. Pretty sure I did that not in camera. Hooray! I'm such a bloody expert. I'm not an expert at anything I'll tell you. Except waffling maybe. I'm very good at that. The reason I have to do this is because of those deep creases. If I don't, um, the shimmer kind of skims across the top of the creasing. And then as it sort of dries through the day. Every time I blink I get a shower of uh, shimmer particles cascading down my face. Uh, which if you're wearing a contact lens, clearly not in this eye because I'm blind but I do wear a contact lens in this eye occasionally. Um, it's not good and you also end up with like multicoloured freckles on your face. I mean if that's the look you're going for where you want to increase the number of freckles through the day you go you girl that's a you know that's a top tip or oh, you go you boy I don't mind I, mean, I grew up during the 80s where men wore more makeup than women anyway so nothing new for me seeing men wearing makeup why shouldn't they be allowed to express themselves the same way we do we're allowed to wear trousers what's the difference not a great deal in my book. Right, I'm going to go into Olive U, which is the other. This is this is a more satin rather than a shimmer. But it's a beautiful, oh, isn't that a beautiful colour? But I am, again, going to wet it. And then I'm going to pop this kind of middle of the lid and heading out towards the deeper olive coloured matte that we've used at the edge there and then what I'm going to do once I'm happy you can see how much my lid moves around now I'm nearly 45 I've lost 10 stone my lids are going to move you're going to get honesty with me you're going to see things that 20 year olds don't have to deal with so I'm going to drag a little bit of the gold across onto the olive and then a little bit of the olive back onto the gold and a little bit of the gold back onto the olive again to soften the blend of the two that's so nice these shadows are performing really nicely and they are going to be a great accompaniment to the smoke, shadow, uh, smoke sessions palette let me know 
um, if you want to see me do a tutorial with this palette and smoke sessions because obviously smoke sessions has only got two mattes in it whereas this has got significantly more so if you'd like to see me use the two palettes together then let me know in the comments box and I will see what I can do for you because gotta be honest I'm loving playing with greens right now it's quite funny because uh, all the while especially through the 80s and 90s it was oh, if you've got green eyes you can't use green eyeshadow it will detract from your eyes no it doesn't it just increases the effect significantly Yes, so let me know in the comments if you want to see me use this one with smoke sessions at some point. I know Elle loves tea is going to be super happy because I know she loves a good green look. Right, I am going to pause you um, while I do foundation and everything and I'll be back to finish this look off with you. I'm back. Hello. Right, time to finish off the eye look. Right, let me see now. I'm going to grab this flat top brush and I'm going to go into. Let's go into Charmed to continue that deeper colour. Because I really like that one. And then I can link it up with the edge there, like so. And. Uh, Just run it along under my lashes. Yeah, I like that. Now this side I usually flinch and end up like there going way lower than I need to. Because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision. So I'm kind of relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's quite a long way away to fair. When you haven't got a contact lens in or your glasses on. Ah, oh, the joys of getting old. Better than the alternative, though. Pneumonia on my birthday two years ago nearly finished me off, but uh, I'm a stubborn bugger and I stayed around. Just as well, otherwise, I've never got around to doing this YouTube channel. Right. This is a tart brush, came with the uh, Graveyard Girl. Swamp Queen palette. Um, so again, flat top, but it's nice and chunky, so it's great for blowing out the under eye there. And I'm going to go in with... Um, I think I might go in with Act Natural, which I've not used yet. It's one of the more mid-tone shades. I'm just going to very gently buff that on the edge there and then bring it along so that the majority of the colour is up at the edge here. Oh, my nose is really itching just there. I've got my foundation. I really hate when that happens. Don't you hate hay fever as a rule anyway, to be honest. Let's See if I can get this to match this time. Because very often, you know like when you're doing your winged eyeliner, and you get one side perfect and then the other side's a bit too low, so you sort of go back in to even it up and before you know what you're doing, you've got an Amy Winehouse look going on. Yeah, I have the same issue with my under eyes when I'm smoking them out. Well, I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with that today. Now, I'm going to see if their gel liners are as good as Paulina says they are. Admittedly, she was talking about um, the pots of gel liner, and I've got a pen version. 
Put this thing on the pen anyway, the shade. Yeah, Electric Daisy, that's good. I don't need to keep the box if I don't want to. And it's a twist up jobby. So, let's see if I just if I grab my. I'm going to have to get a. I'm going to need to get a, a mirror a little bit closer to me, folks. Otherwise, I am going to pick myself in my apple. Oh, and go off camera, apparently. Not the. Really, oh, this is the problem. My eyes water so much when I put anything on my waterline. They, they hate it. This is why. I mean, I'll do this sometimes for photos for Insta. But I can guarantee you that within like half an hour, it'll either have all come off or um, it'll be sort of like collected in whatever colour it's like. In this case, it'd be green, a luminous green boogie in the corner there. Let me just grab a clean, dry cotton pad and just. Try and soak up some of the the watering that my eye apparently wants to do immediately. Marvellous. Don't pull the um, thing too far out because it is quite soft. So only only sort of wind up as far as you need to. This is a really lovely colour though, I will admit. And it's it's going on really nicely. I really hate it when you've got those sort of eyeliners where you have to keep going over and over and over and over. To get any colour payoff at all because my eyes hate that and water instantly continuously and then for the next three days usually can't wear makeup at all because the edges here just go don't like you I'm going to cry hmm. okay right highlight let me grab my Jeffrey Platinum Ice Palette and I'm going to go into Alien Ice which is the, the green one here there's a surprise this is just a cheap brush that I picked up from eBay years ago so I'm going to pop a little bit of this up under the tail of my brow I do like Jeffrey's formula when it comes to highlights. You just, you know, you get such a good payoff with them. I know some of them, um, like Lavender Snow, for example, does get quite a bit of hard pan. Um, but to be honest, I just, I have an old spoolie like this that I use for roughing up the top of my my Tarte exposed blush it's gone a bit dry so it's difficult to get any pigment out of it um, so I just use that and rough the top up and then so I've got like loose pigment to pick up and then I still get great colour because I'm like I mean Tarte Amazonian clay blushes last forever I mean, I've had that one two years, and at one point I was using it pretty much every day. And yeah, I know, you're supposed to get rid of them after whatever it is, 12 months or whatever. But providing powder products don't smell funny, look funky, change to texture, etc. Or grown any bits on it that weren't there originally. I'm happy to keep using them. But that's at your own risk. 
Now you've just seen that I, I do my inner corner and then I just come along just under the tear duct and then blend it in with the colours that I've popped under my eye. With my eye shape I found that is the most flattering way um, to wear highlight but if that doesn't work for you you can just do the inner kind of corner or not at all if you don't want to. Okay, I'm going to pause you, I'm going to bung some more highlight on my face, uh, I'm going to put some mascara, some lippy on, do something with my hair I'll be back with my final thoughts. Uh, I'm back. No, I've not had a haircut. It's up in a ponytail again. It's, it's quite a warm day. Okay, so what else have I got on my face? I've got my number seven Hydroluminous Foundation in Porcelain. I used a combination of uh, Revolution Conceal and Correct in Peach and the Too Faced Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer in Swan. Set it all with Coty Air Spun, um, Butter Bronzer and Tarte in Journey. Now this is one of a, a mini Christmas set that I bought a couple of years ago. And there were like five or six. I've decluttered all the other shades <laughs> to Sophie, who um, does my nails, um, because I just wasn't using them. This was the only shade with all the other um, blushes that I'd got. Because I, and, and bearing in mind at one point Tarte was on my shit list, so I wasn't using them on here. Uh, with all the other blushes I got, this was the only one that was a unique tone compared to everything else so I kept this one. Thought I'd wear it today, I think it goes quite nicely. Um, used the picking up laces tip from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. Used the Wet n Wild colour icon bronzer in Reserve Your Cabana as a finishing powder all over. Um, works similar to how the Hourglass Ambient Lighting um, powders work. It's great especially when you're using a very very matte foundation obviously the one I've used today isn't but when I'm using a matte foundation that's great because it just it makes your skin look look like skin again um, the highlight we discussed the mascara is the Catrice Glam and Doll volume waterproof absolute bang on dupe for the benefit bad gal bang but it's waterproof and it's cheaper uh, and yes these are genuinely my real lashes they are not fakes there's no uh, inserts, there's no bulk added, there's no fibres, things because again contact lens can't have fibres coming down so that's literally just that mascara. Uh, and setting spray was as ever one of my slay all days in watermelon as you can see I'm probably cracking through this one. Thankfully I have got uh, a coconut one over there and I think I've got another one somewhere else as well that I bought. <coughs> right, so what are my initial final thoughts on these two? Um, I really like them. Um, I'm so impressed that that mint had as much pigment as it did and didn't blend away when I was using it. There wasn't a massive amount of fallout and I wasn't tapping my brush off. So that was impressive. Um, everything blended together really nicely there weren't any issues of catching or sticking or areas where I was having to spend ages and ages and ages blending to get the look that I wanted um, so that's awesome too uh, so far I'm really liking this obviously I love the fact this is so soft it went on so quickly how long it will actually stay in my waterline <laughs> I will let you know. Um, if I remember, I might take photos through the day. But I am having a coffee and a catch up with Sophie, so there's probably going to be a lot of gossiping going. Oh, Lippy. Uh, Makeup Revolution in Prime. This is the dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lippy. It's fast turning into one of my favourites. It's actually taking over from Greatest, which was my previous one. Um, but I really like this. this, this just goes with everything. I was going to put a green lip on again, but I just thought, no, do you know what? I've done a couple of wild looks the last few days, let's just let the eyes be the feature today. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really loving this. 
absolutely if you want it get it so far you're not going to be disappointed from what I've seen I will of course use it again not necessarily on camera but I will use it again use all the shades including that Mobamba one which as I said when I swatched it I had to do, I had to do two or three swatches but um, I wanted a, a lighter look today I will try Mobamba again when I do a more smoky look so um, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube is still unsubscribing people most unhelpfully um, I want to do my 500 subscriber giveaway but I hit 500 I sometimes go to 501 and then I go back to 499 and then I go to 500 and then I go to 499 every single time I've hit a double zero number this happens and I bounce up and down usually for a good couple of weeks so once I'm over the 500 and I know I'm definitely staying over the 500 I will do my 500 subscriber giveaway because I was waiting for Revolution as well to bring out their version version of Icy Betch and they've finally done that so I'm going to I've actually ordered their version of Icy Betch fingers crossed it should be arriving today um, if I'm happy with the quality I'll buy another one to stick in the giveaway if not I'll tell you I didn't like it and I'll just give away the bits that I've already collected um, and collated for my giveaway but I need to get above and stay above 500 subscribers before I can do that so please double check you are still subscribed that's basically what that waffling was all about um, I hope you enjoyed this I hope you liked the look uh, don't forget to comment in the comments below if you want to see me do a look either with teaming that with um, Icy Betch or the Smoke Sessions palette or the Paulina palette um, or Hasina 2 uh, that's the majority of my sort of greener palettes um, fingers crossed next couple of days Affinity 2 should be coming out to me which is the, the blue and green version from Certify so I'm looking forward to that coming out as well and then I think I might have actually uh, my green and blue lusting may, might actually be satiated at that point right all that remains for me to say as ever is your stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.